All right, I am here with Howard Berger, the B of K and B effects. The the B, the B, right. the big B, and we're here today to talk about the work of uh, you and your team on Legion, which is yes. created by Noah Hawley on and it's on Netflix. Uh, actually, it's on FX. Oh, sorry, yes. FX. I watched it, it on you, Hulu. You know what, there's an X, but it was an X, and that gives. There's me always an X, so it could be Netflix or FX. <laughs> so it's all confusing. That's part of your writer. You're or Affleck. Affleck. It was my totally Affleck different. Network, which I'm sure they'll be making content soon. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, it's cool. We uh, there's been three seasons. We just finished season three, and season one was done up in Vancouver, and Todd Masters handled all the effects, and, and he did a cool job up there, and. Production um, decided, and Noah decided he wanted to be back in L.A., so they they wrapped it up in Vancouver and moved to Los Angeles, and one of the producers, John Cameron, uh, is a good friend. He was uh, first AD on Army of Darkness. I knew him through Sam Raimi and worked with him a bunch, so he's now an executive producer on the show, and he called and said, hey, we're doing this show. Would you be interested? And we were finishing up season one of Orville. And uh, I went to their office and met with them and really liked Noah and, um, you know, liked what they did season one. And I'm like, yeah, I'm totally up for it, you know. So I said, I'll just do the effects and hire somebody else to handle the straight, you know, to run the department. So they ended up hiring Todd Ma- um, Todd McIntosh, who's really, really great. And Todd runs the show for season two and season three. And then I just show up and do Creatures, which is perfect for me. That's what you love. I do. I love it. And it just kind of frees me up to do other things. So it worked out great. So we, um, some of the stuff we did is we revisited a character from season one, which is also from the graphic novel Legion, because it's based in the Marvel universe, uh, X Men universe, and like Lauren uh, Schuler Donner is is like the main producer on it because she's got her fingers in all that stuff, which is great, and she's awesome and really really smart and knows all the knows the ins and outs of everything, and and um, um, so we we revisited the demon with the yellow eyes, and so Todd did that last year or the for season one, and then we redid it. Um, season two and season three, and uh, it's a really cool makeup. It's like a big cowl piece. It's a real skinny guy. It's on a really skinny guy, and um, and you're probably saying, oh well, why didn't you do it on a big heavy set guy? Because Noah wanted like the legs and arms to be super super thin, and um, it was easier to do it this way. So he's in a big cowl. It's all foam rubber, and a chin and a forehead and a nose and ear lobes and uh, paint up his teeth, and he's got these big yellow contact lenses, and I hand lay all the hair and eyebrows and stuff like that and paint up his body and it's it's fun i mean i was i i got it down to about two hours it was myself and jerry quist uh season one or season two rather sorry and um uh yeah it's a fun makeup so then for season three it was tammy lane and myself doing it and again it was about an hour we got it down to like an hour and a half it went pretty quick but super fun makeup to do, um, and there's a new character. Before we move on, yeah, uh, is that a fo- is that a foam uh, makeup or is that silicone? It's all foam. I love foam rubber. Like I I think it's great. You know I I'm a big fan. And we use a lot of foam here because you know f- shows like what Greg Nicotero handles, like he handles all the Walking Dead stuff. And you, we don't have the opportunity to life cast actors and do custom makeup, so we sculpt hundreds of makeups and. Greg found that it's easier to, and it is, easier to, like, nip and tuck and manipulate foam than it is silicone. Because, you know, when you put silicone on, it just wants to lay where it was molded. So we use a lot of foam rubber on on all the shows. Like, uh, Orville's all foam rubber. So, But I wanted, I just like the look of it. I like the way it moves. I like the way it feels. So primarily we have, I'd say, like, 90% of the makeups are are foam. And um, there's another character that's a spinoff on The Devil with the Yellow Eyes, which is the Skinny Devil. And actually, that's silicone because he's really skinny and droopy and gross. And uh, a performer named Dirk Rogers uh, plays him. And he works here at K&B. And he's also like our resident monster guy. We always put him in suits. He's great. And I wanted to do that in silicone because I wanted it to have movement and squoosh and he's got these big arm appliances on like an old, old uh, you know, bubby. You know, <laughs> flap, flapping her arms around, so it's cool. So we did that in silicone, and Tammy Lane and I do that, and that's about two-hour makeup. And uh, what it is, it represents uh, the devil with, devil with the yellow eyes 30 years prior to eating David's soul for 30 years. So he's skinny and uh, and uh, and floppy and all kind of gross. And through the 
30 years of eating David Soul, that's how he gets fat. So, so yeah, so there's two different actors that play those characters. And, and for those of you who haven't seen the show yet, it follows uh, the story of David, who is the son of Professor X, right. and who uh, was diagnosed schizophrenic in his younger years, uh, but it's really his his power, this mut- mutant power, where he has these multiple personalities, mm-hmm. each one with a different uh, with a different superpower. Right. So that this is the character it follows. So check out the show if you haven't, yeah. and you'll know what it's, Howard's talking yes, about. Yes, it's so it's fun. So as you were saying, the the, oh, yeah. the skinny demon so before skinny he started demon. chomping down yeah, on David. Before he started Soul. eating, David Soul yeah. was skinny. Right. And then he puts weight on through the because season three is a, is a flashback basically we go back in time time travel back and we see how things begun and and uh it's cool it's a really it's a really interesting storyline the season two even though i read every single script i was lost and i just i go to the meetings and go i uh, okay so what's happening here it's it's actually a challenging <laughs> show I, I i saw an interview with noah holly he said i don't care if you understand it i care that you have an experience right. with this show which is true because i then when i watched the shows i'm like i still don't know what's going on but god is this cool <laughs> and it is the imagery is amazing and he creates beautiful beautiful imagery and and and, uh, really interesting characters. It's just I'm confused. <laughs> but season three, I understand better because it's a little more linear for me. And um, uh, we go back in time where we meet Charles Xavier actually, and his wa- and his wife, who's David's mother, and and uh, it's before David is born, and the, you know we see this whole thing. So for season three, we have um, some of our reoccurring characters, like we have the uh, Devil with the Yellow Eyes, and also these characters from season two called Vermilion. Which are these um, these beautiful girls? The bodies are beautiful, and the faces are, as Noah put it, the faces of Dennis Franz from NYPD Blues. <laughs> and so when we designed it, I'm like, okay, you know, we we're gonna do all the pock marks because he always looks like he has not great skin. So the first test was we had these three beautiful girls, and we made them up to look like Dennis Franz, and they have like Sonny Bono wigs and big mustaches and, and really weird looking. So we're looking at them, and we, I did them all in silicone originally, and this was on the test day. And Noah was looking at it, and, he, and Noah's a man of very few words. Like, I had to learn his language. It took me a while. And he'll just say like one or two things, and, and now I understand what he wants. But that first season was, in the beginning, was difficult. And so he looked at him and he thought and thought and then he came back to me like an hour later when we were supposed to shoot with him and we ended up not because he wanted to change him and he, he just kept saying, I want them to feel like like they've been Earl Shived. And Earl Shive was a guy who owned a company in, in the Valley in Los Angeles who literally would just spray paint everything. Like my dad used to always make a joke like, come on down to Earl Shives, we'll paint your tires, your your windows, your everything, you know, just <laughs> one color. So I, it took me a while, but then I was like, okay, I know what he wants. So we went back, re-sculpted everything to be really smooth. And it was, um, it's a forehead, nose, uh, like a horseshoe piece, nothing on their neck, and like a lip blender. The and, horseshoe piece is the jawline. Yeah, the jawline and chin all connected. So, and um, and we ran them out of foam because we had very little time uh, to put it together. And we painted it all like one color. There's three colors involved. There's like a mauve, and then like um, like a, another flesh tone, and then we hit it with a uh, uh, rice paper color. And they look very plain and very like windswept or very you know polished, synthetic. And that's exactly what he wanted. So it was an interesting, interesting, um, you know, um, progression, you know, done very, very quickly. So we have those guys reappear, and uh, they're cool. And then we also have these new characters called Time Eaters. And Time Eaters are these weird creatures that live through time. And they're a little reminiscent of, um, I'd say the point of reference would be the Blue Meanies from Yellow Submarine. And uh, and there's these weird little creatures that wear these big goggles, uh, these magnifying goggles, and they're really cartoony. But they travel in and out of the doors of time, and and uh, at first we think they're causing havoc, and then we find out towards the end of the season they're not really causing havoc. They're there for for a reason, and it's not sinister. So, but um, we made. S- Five of them, right, five of them, and two different sculptures. Uh, Andy Burkholz sculpted one, and Garrett Emmel sculpted the other, and they're just slightly different, but they have, like, these big, long noses. They're all foam rubber. They're almost, they're basically pull-over-the-head masks, and um, they have these big acrylic teeth because they're always smiling like a Cheshire cat, 
and um, and then the, the the visual effects guy uh, supervisor on the show came up with this idea for the goggles to not do them digitally like the eyes and blinks, but do them practical. So he got these little like light these little panels that you can program. I guess he got them on Amazon or something and programmed them with eyes that are moving around and blinking. And you, because we have the goggles that are magnifying, they really punch. So you've turned them on and there, there's eyes going, you know, moving around and it's lighting up. And Noah really, really, really liked that because it was something that we didn't have to do digital solution with. And it just was something we hadn't seen before, uh, aside from doing it practical, which was really, really cool. So um, we have those guys running around, and, and, you know, we just paint up their hands blue. There's a specific colors we mix for them. Um, but they're really, they're really, really fun characters. I like those guys a lot. And then, um, yeah, those guys. We've There's uh, another character who's in all three seasons, played um, by an actor named uh, Hamish Linkletter, and uh, it's a character named Clark. And he's in a burn makeup. Half his face is burned. And so Todd Masters did season one, and it was fairly extreme. And then Noah wanted to kick it back and not go as extreme. So season two, Tammy Lane applied that makeup. It did a beautiful job. It was a nice silicone piece on Hamish. I think like three pieces. It was side of the face, a chin piece, and an ear piece. And then um, this season, we redesigned it again because it was going to be even less. And um, Carrie Ann Soleil has applied it. Uh, this year and has done a great job as well and he's got a contact lens and one hand is slightly burned so it's a it's a cool little character makeup and Hamish is really really great in it so it's it's nice but the show's given us a great opportunity to to come up with things that are very unique like I definitely look at it and say I can't use it I can't reuse any of this on any other show because <laughs> it's so unique sometimes you do a show and you're like oh we can just we'll reuse that forehead and that nose or whatever this is like off the charts bizarre I'm like nope this is 100% legion and um it's been fun and they're really good people like now as I'm getting older and, and been at this for so long that you know I feel like I don't want to I don't want to work on shows that are going to be miserable and people that don't don't respect the artists and that's a big problem because you know artists have always been taken you know um have taken been taken advantage of through the centuries you know i mean look at michelangelo you know working for the church and never made a dime and just was in you know servitude for for forever and ever and ever so not that I compare what we do on Legion to Michelangelo, mind you. Don't don't get that connection. But but the fact is that artists are always, you know, hey, can you do us a favor? Come on, can you just, can you, you know, what's taking so long? It's like, guys, we're we're actually making stuff. We have to figure it out. There's a specifics to it, you know. And and uh, it's it's so I, I don't want to work on shows and with people that behave that way because if there's a lack of respect, it doesn't make any sense. It's I'm you know I I just want to do things that are fun with nice people. That's like my main objective these days. And and if it's not fun, and you can pretty much smell it, like from the first meeting, you know, you walk in, you're like, I smell a rat. I don't want to be here. And, you, and you'll do the meeting, but afterwards you're like, you call them and you're like, no, and I think I'm okay. So if you consider on the KNB FX website changing the tagline, we like to have fun with nice people. Yeah, that's a good idea. I should do that. <laughs> I should actually put that on all the crew shirts I make, you know, because uh, it's true. It's like Greg and I and everybody else that's been at this, my whole generation, you know, it's we all feel that way, you know, and it's you really, really have to fight to have the the just the common courtesy, you know, and I think that's something that, you know, your dad was great at, like your dad established that um, that earmark. It's like there's there's going to be um, a level of of uh, of consideration and, and respect for what we do, you know, and um, mixed with fun. And oh, yeah, always with fun. And um then that's the perfect combination, you know. So I really keep that alive, and and I was even today talking to a production manager who was not going down the, you know, we had a production meeting, and he right out of the gate was saying, you know, this is, we're going to be very professional, and this, and this, and this, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to use that against him. And when I saw what certain conditions were going to be, I said, you know, this isn't very professional. And you said it yourself, you know, but how do we, how do we make this a professional production when, you know, I understand what the limitations are, you know, financially and so forth. That's fine, but you can still put your best foot forward day one. Don't don't have everybody step through the mud day one because then it's just going to be a, a mess the whole time. Well, so often the, the tone of a show uh, starts at the top, and in that interview with Noah I watched, he, he did say he really loved 
practical effects and wanted to achieve as much in camera as possible. And there was something in that first season, that, that recurring scene of David in the kitchen yeah. where all the stu- stuff's exploding out oh, of the yeah. cabinets, most amazing sequence, yeah. and achieved you know, largely, at, the, at least the explosion aspect, right. practically, and there were some other things. But tell me about that, uh, working with him. You said he's a man of few words, but he clearly respects the practical arts. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, uh, he loves the practical stuff. We um, were building this giant, enormous pig. I mean, like a 20-foot pig for for this season. And uh, it's in, like, episode one and, and three. And um, we uh, proposed to do a full-size 30 or 20-foot-long pig, mechanical pig. And he was up for it 100%. He's like, this sounds great. But then the studio came back and said, we need to kind of reconfigure and let's think about this and this. So I went back with two, a couple alternatives and, and Noah of course picked all the alternatives because they were all practical. Like one was to do a miniature, which is probably about four feet. And he's like, yes, let's do that. And let's do the big one. And listen, we ended up doing like a section of it, like where the teats are. Cause that's where the action happens. Like people are there and, you know, like using it as almost like a, a hookah. And this giant pig is like shooting out this like blue hallucinogenic smoke. Now, there's a scene we've seen a million yeah, times. You've seen, you know, you probably saw this a lot on, you know, Starsky and Hutch. And, uh, you know, and uh, who knows what else. <laughs> but it was it was cool. But I love the fact that Noah wanted to do a 20-foot pig. But then I, I had to say to him, because when the studio was like, we're not going to do that. And then I had to go to Noah and go, hey, you know what, maybe we should think this, this, and this. And I said, you know, the biggest problem is what do we do with a 20-foot mechanical pig when we're done? I said, I don't want it. We don't have room for it. So, and, and, and we ended up building this big puppeted pair of teats. It's gigantic. It's like it's like 10 by 10 section of a pig. So anyhow, the other day, the production design, or the production manager called, Robert Reeves called me and said, so we're, we're done with the set. What do you want to do with the pig? I said, I don't, I don't want it. You guys take it home. We're sending it to Noah. And he's like, no, I think we're going to have to destroy it. And I'm like, really? I said, it's such a cool piece. He's like, well, then you can have it. I said, I don't want it. It's too big. Anyhow, I think they ended up destroying it. They chopped it all up. And I'm just looking at thinking like, wow, that's a pretty expensive piece that they just chopped up. But whatever, you know. But it was still, we made a big, cool thing. And I remember when we got it all set up and I had all the puppeteers behind it. And Noah came on set. He was like, God, how do I come up with this shit? <laughs> so, really cool. so was it one puppeteer for every two teats? It was uh, kind of, yes. Uh, actually, I, I was in there and I had, let me think. I think I had three or four teats. And then like Dave Grasso, we put him up top and he had the upper ones. And then Dave Wogue was down below. And then, you know, we had a, we had Steve Frakes pushing on one. And we'd all sit there and, warm, warm. and we had these tubes coming out and we and the special effects guys. Um, Mark Byers hooked up smoke and it's like and uh, it was cool it was I mean so twisty and bizarre and the whole set was crazy anyhow you know but that's the other thing too with the success of this show is the all the production design and cinematography Dana uh, um, Gonzalez is a really great DP and it's just really a creative creative thing I mean there's some weird shit that comes out and this year we got scripts a little late you know last season they were all laid out this year I was like, okay, what's going to be in, you know, 306 and 307? And they finally come out. I'm like, oof, there's a lot of stuff. You know, we got to figure this out. And they were always good with juggling the schedule. Like if I said, you know what, I don't think I can have this ready at this date. Can we push this a little bit and shoot it, you know, maybe in the next episode and just pick it up? And they were able to accommodate things. They would do that for all the departments, which was nice because they wanted it to be as good as it could be, you know, instead of like, we just need to get it done. And that wasn't the attitude. And the and the pace on set is a very nice, like luxurious pace. It's not like let's shoot forty pages today. It's like you know let's do like two pages or whatever, and we'll get to it. That's like feature pace. Yeah, yeah. It felt like feature pace, and and we did we rarely did overtime, which was nice. Like I I think I had my longest day was like thirteen hours, which is nothing, you know, because other shows like the Orville we were doing ninety hour weeks for eight months, so and we were, were killing ourselves. And it's that's just not a way to live, you know. Um, and we enjoy it, but you got to have a quality of life. And I think that's what that's the what the Legion production understands. It's also interesting because FX, even though it's part of Fox, they have two different like um, like work theories, you know, like work, like business models. I think, and it, the the Fox stuff is really really difficult, and the FX stuff is really not as difficult. It's fun, like you really have a good time, and they treat you better. <laughs> better than the Fox guys did, I felt. So, but um, 
but yeah, it's great. I mean, I would do anything with Noah because he's just so cool and smart. I just like the way his brain thinks and he lets it develop. He play, he likes, he doesn't want you, he doesn't want to tell you exactly what he wants. He wants to plant the seed and see how it grows. And if it grows in the wrong direction, he'll kind of like trim it back, you know, and help to re- redirect the branches. Uh, but if he is going off into another world and he starts to like, wow, this is great. And his brain's thinking it's very collaborative. You know, it just wasn't like, handing me stuff we designed everything that we were responsible for i was going to ask you that because so often these days the production designer or or uh, will put together a team and and the shops will get delivered the designs right. and you just have to execute yeah so. no this was very it was it was more than being a facilitator because we were we designed everything we produced and it was really nice you know and and a lot of times it was very few design phases you know maybe two at the most and we'd send it out, and Noah would make comments, and then we'd revise it real quick. John Wheaton and Mike Broom uh, would knock it out and send them off, and Noah would be like, that, that, and that. So he's also very decisive. You know, it's not like, well, I, I don't know what it is until I see it. You know, he knows what he wants to see, which was great. Were you doing mainly 2D uh, design <clears throat> work or any ZBrush? Yeah. Uh, we did both. We did some ZBrush stuff. The guys are using ZBrush up a storm here, which is really great, like Dave Grasso really brought ZBrush into the shop and printing things out. And on the time meters, there's stuff that's printed, like the goggles are all printed. Dave designed them on ZBrush, or I think Dave or Andy Burkholz, one of those two guys, and we output everything and worked out really, really well. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll design on ZBrush quite a bit, and it'll go back and forth between ZBrush and Photoshop. And, you know, even the guys will go ahead and start it in ZBrush and then, and, and then, uh, you know, export it to Photoshop and finish it up so it has more of a photorealistic look to it, you know, for what, what our needs are. Um, you mentioned two designers. Was there anyone else who was involved in the design process? Yeah, well, we, um, I would say uh, Mitch Devane was involved when Mitch was working here. He was designing on the time eaters. He did a really nice little maquette that we're trying to finish up and mold and give to uh, Noah as a wrap gift. And... Um, Mitch was involved, and uh, John Wheaton, and and Mike Hill, or uh, Mike Broom rather, and uh, Grasso. Those guys were very, very heavily involved with the design of everything on the show. Great. I also want to backtrack just to make sure we name check key artists on on some of the oh. other key characters we talked about today. So I'll name the character right. and from memory, tell me who sure, worked on it. And if you it. get it wrong, it's okay oh, because yeah. I'm going to double check. All right. I won't so get it wrong. Let's start with the Devil with Yellow Eyes. Devil with Yellow Eyes. Um, like I said, it was originally designed by Todd Masters. Uh, for season one, and then season two was Andy uh, Andy Burkholz, um did all the sculpting. Uh, we didn't have to do any design work because we knew what it was going to be. So Andy did all the sculpting and and painting, pre-painting on the pieces, and then um, yeah, Christina Patterson did the contact lenses, and I had Brandy Morris uh, do a bunch of pre-painting as well. So, oops, hold on, yeah. Oh, we're still recording. Great. Now let's move on to the Skinny Devil. Skinny Devil is, um, again, Andy Burkholz. Andy seems to do a lot of stuff on, on uh, the shows. So Andy um, uh, sculpted everything. Um, John Wheaton did all the 2D art work for it, did all the artwork for it. And, and again, it was like two passes. We got it pretty quick. And uh, Andy blocked it out, and then Noah had changes, and we just made those modifications worked really, really well. And then uh, Tammy and I applied it all. We didn't do any pre-painting on it. We just, we just, I just painted it on Dirk. It was much easier to do it that way. And because I'm pretty quick with makeup, I, I knew I could get it, get it done pretty quick. And what about the, uh, the time eaters? The time eaters were uh, a combination of um, uh, John Wheaton and Mike Broom and uh, Mitch Devane handled the design work, and then Garrett Immel and Andy Burkholz did the um did the uh sculpting so and then uh we had andy schoenberg put everything together andy like did all the a lot of the pre-painting um and uh put all the goggles together and then i actually ended up sending andy to set and andy handles the time meters like i went the first like week because i was just like okay well i'm all establish them and then Andy came in and he would take them to set and make up their hands. And I usually like to do like one makeup artist per time eater, just because aside from just making up their hands, heads on, heads off, all that shit. And then hooking up the goggles and just for expedience, if you had one person doing all four or five, by the time you got the last guy on, the first guy wants to come out. 
So I'm like, let's just do it this way. Plus, I really, I really tr- strive to keep people employed. Not unnecessarily, but I just feel it's important that we keep um, keep union members going to work and making their hours. And, and this, is, this show accommodates that, which is really, really nice. Great. And then the last one, or is there actually two, uh, mm-hmm. is the, the, vermilion, the vermilion and then the uh, that Clark Byrne makeup you were right. talking about. So the vermilion, uh, John Wheaton did all the artwork for that. Um, all the Photoshop stuff. And then sculpturally, I had uh, Garrett Immel and Dave Grasso and Andy Schoenberg sculpt the pieces for the, that. And then, of course, went to the mold department, and, and Mike Ross runs that, and Derek um, Kraut ran all the foam. His department ran all the foam and everything. And then we didn't pre-paint anything. We painted everything on set. And usually I'd, I'd mix it up. like it was. I'd have um, myself doing a Vermilion and Jerry Quist and uh, Stephen uh, Prouty and Kevin Haney and uh, Chris Nelson. We were primarily the, the Vermilion guys. So we'd go and we'd just find the, the actor that we, we got along with the best or whatever. They were all great. All the girls were great. And... Um, you know, we just clicked with this one or that one, and that would just do this makeup, or Chris would just do like this makeup. So, um, but yeah, it's really really fun. Um, and again, it just you know we we get them all done, and then they go downstairs to the hair department, get their Sunny Bono wigs on. Um, this year, Joy Zapata is the uh, hair department head, and which is great because she's she's um, super talented and, and a powerhouse and. And, uh, and like I said, Todd McIntosh is running the department for the last two seasons, and he's great as well. So, um, but it, 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 that's I wanted to have somebody in place um, that I got along with and worked well with as the makeup department head. So I had recommended Todd because I I knew that there'd be a lot of crossover, and I didn't want to get into it with somebody who just wasn't gonna work the way we work and and um, you know respect all the departments it, were, it was great because again it goes back to the umbrella thing i always talk about but it, it, it we all worked as one team between makeup and special makeup and hair department worked out well and even with with you know the costume department which has been exceptional and they, you know always talking to them and figuring out how this is going to work and how that's going to work and how this is going to look and make sure we have it 100 percent covered uh, and then finally, that burn makeup. Yeah, the burn makeup. So that was designed by um, John Wheaton did all the artwork based on the stuff Todd Masters did season one. And Andy Schoenberg sculpted that makeup. And uh, we did two different sculpts. We did it, and then I tested it on Hamish. And there were some issues around the nose, and so I asked Andy to re-sculpt it. And I like that. I like not. I like redoing the makeup. So, you know, you test it, and you see what the problem is, and then you go back to it. You know, and refix and fix it, and then it's much much better um, than just like do it and out the gate. You know, and um, so Andy sculpted the second, first and second version, and and then uh, like I said, Tammy applied it season one, and Carrie Ansley applied it season two. He's got a little contact lens to make it like a fogged over eye. So, uh, but yeah, that that's a cool, and that's a that's a full silicone makeup as well, and multiple piece, and um, yeah, it's it's just a fun show. It's it's something really different and and um they really they they know what they have you know and maybe it's not the greatest show regarding ratings and you know it's a a show that people find and and then get addicted to which is great you know because it is it's really unique it might be too unique for for the general public you know it's not nothing's handed to them on a platter in this show you really have to pay attention it's not a show you can watch and text your friends or walk out of the room and you have to literally pay attention to everything or else you're just like i don't know what just i don't know what's going on here so i like that it's a totally different feel from the other marvel Mm -hmm. uh properties it's it's very uh abstract in in ways um and and so um ambitious with regard to the shots you, you pointed out which makes it that much more shocking to me that production is running so smoothly because what they're yeah. trying to do on the show is very ambitious it is very ambitious and i mean you know we we don't always make our days but there's uh, times that you know we fall a little behind but they don't seem to worry about it like we're just like yeah we're all good <laughs> i'm like okay you know we all go to set we do our makeups we go to set we wait to shoot them 
they do a great job shooting them and then they wrap them and then we go back or sometimes they don't get to them. We've had certain characters that took a long, long time. We had this Minotaur character season two. The, again, Dirk Rogers, who plays the skinny devil, was in and it's a huge makeup, full body. And, and uh, there were a number of times like we got him in at 5 a.m. And then 9 p.m. they go, oh, you know, we're not going to get to him. And I'm like, yeah, we figured that. And, you know, but the whole day Dirk's patient. He sat in his room and read, you know, in a full makeup. Um, but that happens sometimes. And, and uh, but, you know, I think it's a it's a fairly well-oiled machine. I mean, as well-oiled as anything can be, you know, we're we're shooting a lot of as we're as we've rounded the end of the show. Two more weeks left. We, uh, you know, have a lot of other little tidbits that pop up like, oh, geez, we got to shoot for 303 or this is for 306. And, you know, things pop up and we keep going back and forth. But you know what? I can't complain because, again, the people are so nice. The production people are so nice, and, and like I said, it starts at the top. Like, Noah is such a great guy, and it just it trickles down, so nobody has any excuse to not be a nice person. You know, strong AD team, uh, strong camera department, costumes. Every department is there 100%. Like, they're really working hard, and yeah. so you you don't want to feel like you're slacking or you're giving, you know, underserving them on any level, so it's really nice. Well, it it shows uh, clearly the team is working well together to pull off that show. Uh, I, I would like to switch gears now just to sure. a general question for you yeah. or point of discussion before we wrap this up. It seems to me the last 10 years where we've seen, you know, in, in, in spite of the great film work that's being done, where we're right. seeing, I think, even more makeup effects and prosthetic makeups is in television. Oh, yeah, um, huge. What, what do you think is the reason for that and what do you see in the future? I think, uh, yeah, the the advent of, like, TV really, like, stepping it up as far as effects go, <clears throat> it's huge. And it probably all stemmed from, like, HBO, you know. Uh, I think that, um, I mean, God, you know, we never used to work on TV. We'd always go, like, no, we just do features. And, like, a little thing would come in for, like, 24 or Deadwood or whatever. And now it's like, yeah, we don't really do features. <laughs> no, we do, but it's far more TV stuff. But I think that's because there's so much content, you know? It's like right now we're doing, let me think, one, two, three, four, five, like five series, five or six series right now. Because there's always something to be done. And they really, really want to make it cool. I mean, they're competing with film. I think there might be out-competing films these days. And, uh, like, you know, we did some stuff on a TV show called um, Umbrella Academy, which is on Netflix. Did this character, Luther, which is really, really cool. And that was that... The show turned out great. Um, obviously, Greg handles Fear the Walking Dead and Walking Dead. And that's Walking Dead's going on its 10th season. So, you know, Greg has really mastered that whole thing. Um, and then we've got a couple other shows that, you know, pop in and out. And there's always something. And, and they really, really, really want great work. Like, I remember, you know, like, maybe on early CSI, the stuff was kind of like, mm, yeah, it's okay, but it's fine. It's television. Now it's like, it's got to be great. Like, they're super specific. We do, you know, once in a while we get a call to do some morgue stuff or whatever, and it's got to be pristine, like, better than film quality. You know, they really nitpick the shit out of it. And the digital artists want want the practical oh, yeah. as much as anyone. Yeah, they, they love it, you know, and, and that's it. Because they have gotten to a point where um, they're under the gun, too. They have limitations. They have money limitations. They have time limitations. And they ask us, like, what well, you guys have to do all this stuff. You know, we want you to do it, and we'll, it'll, you know, you'll establish it. And if we have to go in and did, 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 then we're good. But we do not want to do a full character. And it's great. And we've developed really great relationships with the VFX supervisors. And, and you want it now to be about the final product. It's not about grandstanding. It's not about, like, all well, those VFX were great or those makeup effects were great. It's about the entire, you know, end product is what we can, we're concerned about, the quality. So, I mean, I think it's going to go on and on and on while there's, you know, still a Netflix and a Hulu and an Amazon and, you know, Campbell's Soup. Who knows what, you know. My <laughs> wife, The yeah, Campbell's Network. Sure, my wife's like, when is Costco going to make a movie, you know. <clears throat> you have to look at it like these giant companies because they really could. Coca-Cola could start producing content. So, and if it does, then I want 15% of that. <laughs> no, uh, and, um, but it's crazy, you know, and, and uh they're just producing and producing and producing. So everybody's super busy, which is great. And I, I hope it goes on for a long, long time. I mean, as long as people are watching stuff, it's it's going to be great. You know, I mean, I think in films, things have petered out a little bit. I think the quality of storytelling in, in movies is lacking. Um, but you, 
what you can tell a story in 12 episodes in 12 hours is far better than you can in two hours so you know right there it's it's really a writer's forum i mean tv always has been but now it truly truly is the uh, writer's forum because they can write anything uh, you know as long as it fits into like a a 12 hour period it's awesome really awesome and it's amazing for audiences too there's so much great stuff out there and you guys are working on some terrific shows i know you're a busy man howard Berger. it's uh, taken us a while to schedule this interview but know, it was I worth know. it I'm sorry i'm sorry it was worth it matt <laughs> i know i'm so sorry it, it's just and i like doing it you know i like talking about it it's just sometimes things just like cascade on you and you're like oh god what the where's all this shit coming from so but uh no i'm glad we got the chance to do it very happy so for those of you who have not yet checked out legion uh you can find it on hulu uh the older seasons and uh the new season will be coming out in june right around the time you're you're listening to this podcast and reading this blog so uh watch season three but before you do catch up on seasons one and Mm -hmm. two really really interesting cool stuff noah hawley is a strong voice in television and uh kudos on all the great work by can be effects howard thanks buddy boy thank you for coming and and being so persistent as always matt winston it's my name matt persistent winston that's true it is it's your middle name everybody knows that that's what your dad used to call you (laughs) (laughs) all right guys bye bye